Good day everyone. In this video for my seniors in statistics, we're going to be discussing your senior project. And this is for seniors who are currently taking my statistics class, not my algebra two. In this presentation, we're going to talk about your project, how to present it, and examples of how to do it. Which, by the way, I have posted a video or for example what a project should look like. It talks about the do's and the don'ts of the project, too. So be sure to check that video out so you know what to do. Your project. It depends on you. Um, I usually try to tailor things of your interest. I'm not trying to give you something that you're not a big fan of. Like one thing I would not do is give you data and relating to school stuff because I know you seniors are like over it with school. You don't care to look at that kind of data, so therefore I don't talk to you about that data. So let's go ahead and get to it. So, what you have to do, and this project is all independently, and no one should not be working together, is every person for themselves. Uh, as I stated before, there's a video already posted for you guys to look at and to prepare this um, presentation. So, you have to find a new topic, never discovered, but interest to you. So, again, it got to be some data that is discovered. I mean, that has never been talked about in a classroom, but interesting to you. Find the comparative data to use central tendency. So that time by more mean and mean and stuff that we have been doing this semester. Also, that data needs also to be used for correlations, causation, and regression. And you have to have mastery of statistics. Remember, statistic is using the data to inspire change. If you're not inspiring change or trying to prove a point with your statistics, there's literally no point in you, you know, presenting information. All right. You have to create 10 to 15 slides, which you're not going to get done in 10. Just telling you that right now because there's so much that you have to be able to put in and a lot of details you have to get in. You got to present to the class and of course I already posted a video what you needed to do. Alright, a slide should have intro and that should be time of the facts known and the facts newly founded. It should also have the objective included with the methodology the explanation of the origin of the data and the, of the raw data collected, explanation of the comparative data to refer to graphs you created, which you could use three or more slides, but I guarantee there's going to be more than just three. Explanation, explanation of your scatter point and correlation, explanation of your regression. You have to make five predictions. And you have to use mathematical detail pertaining to regression. Make recommendations based on your statistics and summarize. Your data set must have at least 25 observations. Anything less than that, you have to find another. So I decided to change that for based on um, presentation. So it could range from 12 to 25 observations well, again you have to make a point and make sure this is the thing that's going to determine if you got A or not so you're not giving me what I need I can't really give you the A you deserve so 5 to I mean 12 to 25 observations there was an observation there was a, in the video sorry in the video there are that's an example that's pretty much tells you what you need to do all right 
So you have to have all this completed by April 22nd at 7 a.m. On the 23rd, you got to present the slides. 50% of your grades is based on slides. 50% is based on your grade. Your project is worth 15% of your grade. It will knock you two letters down if you choose not to do so. April 15th is the earliest you could turn this in and get this done. Because after you do this, this is your last grade. It's done with and we gone. Tips on how to score an A. And again, that's a video to give you the beautiful details that you need. So when you're doing this, make sure your data, the compare of the data that you see could be used in terms of time and months to some other stuff that you want to compare it to. Make sure your data is consistent with your objective. Make sure that your R value, if it becomes less than 0.8, is considered to be weak to use, which that says something to us, but we could still use it, but it will be weak. Anything with a 0.197 is recommended that the relationship has more, I'm tripping right here. Yeah, I was tripping on that one. So, if your correlation value is between 0 0.1 and 97, that means that the relationship is a strong one. And if you are struggling with understanding what the correlation relationship means, go look at back at a previous video that I posted. All right, so y'all be careful. Heed this warning. Do not smush everything in the slide. That means do not put in a whole big old essay on one pay, on one slide. Don't do that. When you present a slide, it's supposed to be short bullet points, easy to read, easy to follow. All right. All your intro can have only one paragraph, and one paragraph li literally means 45 sentences. Keep our letters black in the default handwriting. Bold headers, no crazy backgrounds. Do not do too much because as your reader, I have to be able to see what you're doing. Helpful websites to kind of get your data together if you're trying to figure out. If you are struggling, you can go through these websites to find you something good. You go to the, all the other websites we have done too about COVID-19. Everything that we have done and touched and posted, you could look through and you could have a conversation about it. But make sure you know exactly what you are talking about and what you are doing. You can look at government websites if you want to, you know. And whatever data that you do see, you have to turn it into a table f to put into Desmos, or you could do it in um, Google Slides if you have to. But make sure you have good enough data. So data means COVID-19, the number of viruses, I mean, the COVID-19 outbreaks till the time, all right? Or location versus the outbreak. So you could talk about that too. So again, the best bet is to be focused in terms of time. So let your independent variable be all about time versus whatever else you're looking into. So you got any further questions, see me, watch the video that I posted already. That should help you out. And See me only for decimals, issues, copy and pasting graphs. Don't ask me to proofread or determine correctness because this is ultimately a test, your last test that I'm ever going to give you. So you should be able to my wop this quick. So I'll talk to you about it on Tuesday. Hopefully you guys got started on it already. If you not have done so, please get started on it already. And um, I post a video correlation. You pretty much got your data you need.